your life. Hi guys, thanks for joining. This is Essence of History. Today we're going to be talking about this land is made for whom? Going off of the song, this land is your land. I'm Amanda Armagost. I'm Dr. Bossy for Essence, and it's just two of us today, Amanda. Yeah, Why it's just... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's just the two of us. What, why did you choose this? Um, um, I chose this song because in school, especially in fourth grade, we actually have a whole concert based on um, USA songs. It's a patriotic concert that we host in the spring. Um, and one of our main songs is This Land is Your Land, This Land is My Land. So growing up, I always, I knew the lyrics or what I thought were all of the lyrics by heart. And just over the weekend, I realized I only knew about one third of the song. So I yeah. wanted to I wanted to talk about the real meaning behind the song, the reason it was written, and kind of what the message was supposed to be versus what it ended up being. And uh, and I think people who don't understand the history behind this song, they just um, interpret it completely the wrong way. The song is not about the, the, the just uh, being uh, pro, having the, the pride of being an American. It's about the struggle of being an American. Now, um, what did you learn uh, recently that made you think that this song is not what you what you thought it is? What what was how, uh, what did you notice about this song? Well, I want to actually go back to, um, well, the lyrics itself is what I noticed. I didn't need to learn any back history besides the lyrics themselves that are cut out of the song that we learn. So the song that we learn in school is pretty much just the chorus. It's the American dream pretty much is what we're hearing in the song. This land is made for you and me. When the song actually was written during the Great Depression and the point of the strong, the song was a protest. It was to talk about the misfortunes and the struggles of the Americans during that time. Yeah. So also I want to mention, I want to mention that the United States was made for immigrants, and this song really highlights that. Yeah, this is what the part of the song that everybody knows that. This is my land from here to there, the beauty of America and the golden valleys uh, and the highways and the endless skies. And you yes, have a big country. I mean, that is one of the things that when the immigrants, mostly from Europe, came over, they were used to everything is so divided, smaller parcels. Everything is so, um, you know, everything belonged to every, anybody, somebody in Europe. As a matter of fact, I have heard uh, one of the, the reason the immigrant kept coming is that in the United States, you could go out and, you know, hunt and bring meat and put it on the table. In Europe, at that time, if you would go hunt, it would be somebody else's land and you would be poaching. And the crime of the poaching was punishable by death. They would hang you. Now they come to this country they can go and hunt and bring meat and give their family meat. That was unheard of in Europe now. And that is, I, there's a good theory that this idea of freedom, associating guns with freedom comes from the time that people truly hunted to put meat on the table for their family. Now, that's why they don't want to take their gun to be taken away. Um, but that the, the song turned to the dark side pretty quickly. Well, and also I think it's important to note that Woody Guthrie was, he was a worker, right? Like he went around the country trying to find work. Yeah. And the, the timeline as well is important. It was in 1930s. What was the big deal in 1930s? The Great Depression. Not only that, you know, it was hard to live, in U.S., people had no food. People starved in the United States of America. Now, it's important to know, even then, the United States was one of the richest countries in the world, and yet people did not have food. They couldn't irrigate the land. Then, they, then we had 
dust balls. And, then, and that is the desolate situation in the United States that he was roaming, just going from place to place, seeing the plight of the people and seeing what people, but the price people had to pay just to have something to eat. Um, so let's get back to the lyric. Uh, you know, pretty quickly to the dark side that that's why he's talking about here. You want to read that, Amanda? And just, let's just read that. And then we maybe even listen to a part of the song and then we can talk about it. One part of the song, you will notice that at the end of each section, it says this land was made for you and me. That's actually not the original lyric. The original lyric is more along the lines of this land was blessed for me. Uh, the song is kind of to combat the song God Bless USA, right? Yeah. And he's the point he's trying to make is like, this land is only blessed for specific people. So I'll read the lyrics to people who are um, joining in just audio. So it says, I roamed and rambled. I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. All around me, a voice was sounding. This land was made for you and me. So, so um, we're talking, what, we're still talking about the beauty of the United States. And this is kind of where it starts to make a turn. I don't, can you scroll? Yeah. Where he says, there was a big high wall there that tried to stop me. A sign was painted, said private property. But on the backside, it didn't say nothing. This land was made for you and me. So that says it. That says it all. This discrepancy that these people are struggling to live. And this, uh, and all of a sudden, um, they are in places that is private property. And we know what that means. We know the struggle that people had. Uh, and the difference between people who had something and people didn't have anything, anything, and uh, and it's a dark side of our history as well that the federal government was complicit in pe keeping people away from big corporation, big factories that they uh, truly um, still were uh, more or less very rich. But that didn't prevent them to go and do truly malicious things, especially the banks. You know that the, the Great Depression, it was a lack of oversight on the big banks. That is what started the Big Depression. And that caused it, practically caused the cascade effect of many companies going down, many smaller, small, medium sized business is going down and people losing their job even today most of the jobs in the United States is not created by big corporation or banks it's created by small to mid-sized corporation and then it was the same the, the wrong calculation of big corporation big banks actually caused that we, we had the lack of credit so smaller corporation that actually gave people the job, they could not survive. So the difference between rich and poor got so much bigger, and now he's roaming the country and he's hitting a big wall that's separating the rich and the poor. At this point, before even we go forward, I want to talk a little about Woody Guthrie himself. You were amazed about his sign on his guitar. You want to read that for us, uh, for people who are just listening, Amanda? This machine kills fascists. <laughs> now, um, for people who don't know that, um, this fascism at that time, it wasn't had the same meaning that it has here today in 2024. Because 2024 is not a big deal. Everybody who listens fascists say bad people, bad actors, and so on. But the fascists in the 1930s, they used to call themselves fascists. First, through the struggle of these people, the fascists had this uh, connotation of being something bad. So the fascism is the right wing nut job then and now. Now they just don't call themselves fascists. That they think the force of the government 
should overcome the individual will of the people and the government should be top to bottom rather than bottom top bottom to uh, bottom up like a democracy and most of the big industrialists in 1930s in United States, like Ford, the big company, Ford, car company. Henry Ford was, was a big fascist. He was a bit a big advocate and he didn't really hold back. In 1930s, Henry Ford was a big advocate of the Nazis in Germany and the fascists like Mussolini in, in Italy and many other industrialists as well they were advocating a similar changes in United States. Um, and it, for people who are interested to in a very, very uh, um, story-like way to know the actually what happened, please go and watch the movie called Amsterdam. It's a recent movie came out and but many part of it is fiction, but the political part of it is actually pretty accurate. How a handful of industrialists got together. They tried to raise up one of the first World War generals and make him the Mussolini of the United States. The, our blessing was that general knew what war was and practically exposed them for what they are. So the struggle against the fascism, Godfrey didn't mean it kills fascists in Europe. He was referring to the fascist right here in the United States. Um, now, if you don't mind, Amanda, I like to really, this is a very meaningful text. I would love you to read more if you don't mind. Yeah, let's skip over the, um, let's go back, let's skip over kind of the basic stuff. So actually, I have his original poem that he yeah. wrote, and I can read to you some lines from his original poem. So the Go song ahead. is the song is based off of a poem. He was not just a songwriter; he was a poet. He wrote actually hundreds of um, USA songs, and he recorded quite a few. Four years after he wrote this one in 1934, I believe. Okay. But also, I was I was thinking about his sign, "This kills fascists," and some things unfortunately never changed because what I think he meant wasn't like it's murdering fascists, but this is killing fascism, or this is killing the idea, or bringing bringing more light to the idea and showing what it truly is. Some I things never change. I think people understand that you cannot physically, literally kill anybody with a song and a guitar. So. <laughs> yeah, but they're still trying to voice us. Like they're still trying to stop our voices by banning TikTok and right. um repressing people that do kind of say their voice. So that's what I'm saying. Some things never change. Okay. So um I have a so you want to start you now reading the actual poem? I have a different I have a full lyric here according to this. This is the full lyric. What do you want to read, Amanda? I'm just going to start by reading his poem. So, this is the original poem. The song is just a snippet of this. It's a mighty long road that my poor hands have hoed. My poor feet have traveled a long, dusty road. Out of your dust bowl and westward we rode. Your deserts was hot and your mountains was cold. I worked on your orchards of peaches and prunes, slept on the ground by light of your moon. At the edge of your cities, you will see us, and then we will come to the dust. When we're gone with the wind. California, Arizona, I made all your crops, but it's up north to Oregon to harvest your hops. Dig the beets from the ground, pick the grapes from your vines to set your table on your light, your light, your light, your light sparkling wine. When did you come to America the free? Who are your ancestors? What is your creed? Who is the father and the son that we... Sorry, it just makes me so emotional because I feel like we... People have always been trying to talk about this and the united states as a government is always trying to shut down actually what the united states is supposed to be about if our founding fathers were alive right now they'd be so upset i think if the song doesn't make you emotional amanda you have no heart and you 
understand zero from the spirit of being an American. Yeah, this is my sixth time reading this poem out loud, and I've never not cried. The last line of that part, who is the father and the and the son that we, where is the spirit that sought liberty? So he talks about going from city to city, working for that city, harvesting their the, the crops. When he talks yeah. about he talks about other other immigrants coming here to build the United States and then pretty much getting shut down constantly, becoming a second class citizen, not being able to afford where they're living. He's sleeping he's sleeping where he's harvesting the crops. He's sleeping outside of these crops that he's harvesting. And then the next the next section is when did you come to America? Long, long before when the buffalo walked. When did your hands burn like coal? The thing that made this land your pride and joy. So the way I'm taking that is like people came to the United States and there was there were people here. There was stuff here. And instead of respecting it, we burned it like coal. Um, as well, what you notice that he's you talk about who are your ancestors? Who where is your creed? Yeah. Because now, now we say immigrant, but you need to know, in early 1900, the Italian were the bad, or in 1800, Italian were the bad, the, 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 the so-called Catholics were the bad immigrant Italian. And then they were, the Irish people were the bad people. Then they were the Jews who were the bad immigrant. And then... Chinese and then so it it at every episode the people who came actually did the actual work and slept outside of the city on the free moon it says I'm sleeping under the sky and the uh, I'm harvesting your crops and then sleeping on the sky at every point uh, we have a history of um, demonizing people who are different and for for a long time, Italian were different, Irish were different, Jews were different, and so on and so forth. So, but acknowledging that struggle, acknowledging that is us, is what makes us better than everybody else. Because in the rest of the world, um, they don't even acknowledge that that we have this uh, problem with with ourselves. That we we are not as great as we want to be. We can be, we should be, we should strive to in that direction. But as long as we don't solve that problem, we can be proud of the things we have achieved, but we have to be shameful of the things that we are doing right now. Right now, a, a lot of my tax is going to the bombs that falls on the head of babies. We have to be aware of that. We have to be ashamed of that. And we have to turn that shame to something good. And that is where he's asking, where's your creed? Where are you coming from? You, uh, and uh, because we are all immigrant to this country at the end of the day, except if you're natives. Exactly. And if you're natives, you are native to the United States. And unfortunately, we're pretty much genocided by the United, by what we are like now. Yeah. Well, it continues. It actually gets even better. When did you come to America? I came to help you grow, to harvest your crops. I came to build your roads, your cities, and your thoughts. Came to find my freedom. Came to find the spa. Then it does the chorus again. Yeah, but uh, let's stop right there. You see, I came to build your road. I came to harvest your crop. And that is, again, now no different. Now uh, now the Latinos, the Mexican, the El Salvadorian, they come to build our houses. And then what's happening in Florida? We criminalize them. Exactly. And these are and the result is that now the price of the houses is going up, the price of the labor is going up. And every now listen to the farmers in the South. They want this immigrant. They cannot survive without them. Now, with the dumb ideological thing, we are hurting our own economy. They are coming here not to be criminal. They're coming here to build a future. As 
many of us in the previous generation did. We came here to build a future for our children. They are coming now to build a future for their children, and they want to work the hardest from all of us. And the fact that we are criminalizing them now has not been different. It's just the yeah. other group of people that we were criminalizing, but not until recently. So please go on. Also, also, it says that we build your thoughts. He's here to build our thoughts. That's so true. Without all of the people coming to the United States, what would the United States be? Now, I think after we go through this episode, anybody who listened to that will never listen to this song the same way. He continues after the chorus to say, say you're American, but what does that mean? You are the particle, the dust in the scheme. Now that your spirits have haunted in a daze, can we still remember why you came to this place? No, and that is another thing that uh, you now waving a 50 cent flag from China and saying you're American, but what is behind that? What does that really mean? You see, the struggle is not new. The struggle that, you know, is uh, you call yourself a patriot, but you do everything to hurt this country. The struggle is not new. Did you, what did you do to make you proud of being American? Did you build anything? Did you invent anything? Did you give people job? Did you save a life? Did you put us in a good light in the rest of the world? Did you feed a hungry mouth of a children who's starving? What did you do personally you say you're American, but what made you, what did you do to make you proud of being an American? Exactly. And unless you are literally Native American, like you have Native blood in you, then you need to remember that your family came here at one point to give you a better life. Like your family came here for a reason. Why? What makes you different than any other human who wants to come here for the same reason? Uh, and you know that that. The meaning of the patriotism now this and this is not a strong new struggle. People saying saying meaning thing, meaningless things is not a new struggle. That is like um, if you read uh, uh, the last day of Socrates by Plato. That is something says you know you say you are brave, but what does that mean? What do you mean when you say you are brave? Meaning you are running toward the sword. You might be a dumb person running toward the sword. To me, what makes you brave is knowing that you might be killed, you might be harmed, but you are afraid of it, but you do it nevertheless because you think it's going to benefit other people. That is the, describe what is the situation that you can be described as a brave. Now, if you're just a bloodthirsty person, and goes to run toward the, the, the war, is that makes you brave? If you have if you have a mental illness that you're generally not afraid, like you know, you don't really care, if you are depressed, if you're suicidal, and then you go to battle, does that make you brave? No. But if you have a wish to live, if you have family you love, if you are afraid of what you are going to go to the battle, but you go there nevertheless to achieve a higher goal. That is when you are brave. Same here. You're, you say you're American, but what does that mean? Now, what did you do? You say you're proud of being an American, but what does that mean? What, do, what are those elements that make you proud of being an American? That is worth to think about that was worth to think about eight years ago or 90 years ago and that's worth to think about in 2024 yep and then he says when when did you come to america garden of eden garden of rush blank hearts and comforts the dream that we fought the crossroads is here now we forget our debt too much and that's so true we're I think as an American who went to school here, public school in the U.S., I can say that we are a little bit propagandized in school, like in history class. We're always learning about how we win every war. 
we always go to other countries to save them and we always have the best intentions. We really brush over our own dark history, the way that we slaughtered every native here and then made Thanksgiving to celebrate it. The fact that we tore, literally tore families apart in Africa, brought them here and then didn't give them rights. And then when we did give them rights, it actually had to be a big, huge war. Lots of people had to die. And even after that, they still didn't want their, like they still didn't want to give people their rights. And those are the people who, built the country without the slaves that we brought here where would the united states be like we we needed them for our farming we needed them for our industrial things so it's so true we forget our debt way too much we try and cover up our debt and that's the perfect way to repeat history i think that if we if we didn't cover it up as much and kind of embraced the dark side that we've had and said like this is what we've done this is how far we've come and this is how we're not going to repeat it. We could be a so much better country than we are right now. Yeah. And you know, that is a, a truly the struggle that is never get old. This is the conversation that uh, the, I think every generation need to have at least three times because it's a human nature. So there's another thing, you know, that when we were in Kentucky, uh, Amanda, do you remember we went and visited the, the, the museum and this uh, lady sang the, the Kentucky, I think, state? Yeah, song. we visited We visited my old con Kentucky home plantation and she sang the song My Old Kentucky Home, which is their like theme song, their national and their state anthem. Oh. Uh, do you remember what he she said about the meaning and the part of the song that are not singing as a state anthem? Yeah. Don't, and what that meant? Do you want to tell us about that? I don't remember the exact words. I remember that there's a part. So pretty much the song is about a family being sold separately. But yeah, but that doesn't come across at first like that. And it's like it's talked about the beauty of the Kentucky and being home in Kentucky, and then eventually it says good night. But the original song, it wasn't good night. It was about goodbye, because it's a history of slaves being sold, and they have to say for the last time goodbye to their family because they are never going to see them again. And the slave master is saying, "Quit whining, don't whip." Uh, and, and then, don't cry my lady don't cry my lady it's meaning that you know don't cry um just say your goodbyes and then off to your new master because you're never going to see your family again if that's not dark i'm not sure and again this is yet another thing that we take a song that is very deep regarding the struggle of the people. Obviously, the person who made that song wanted to show the dark side of the slavery, that you're being sold, you're saying good, not good night, goodbye to your family, and you should quit crying because you know you're never going to see your family again. So um, we have a lots of baggage in our history in the, in the United States. And the, 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 in that trip, you and I, we were exposed to two of the songs that are very common songs in the United States and the history behind that. And, the, uh, you know, when I understood the meaning of the song, they said, this land is your land, this land is my land. I start loving this song even more because this song is way more meaningful than anybody really imagine. And it's interesting that, you know, I live in Alexandria, Minnesota, there is a big firework. And on radio, when they have the firework, they always play this song. And the other song, which says, um, I'm proud to be an American. And they sing it back to back. But something we learned recently, Amanda, that <laughs> this this land is my land is actually actually a rebuffling of uh, how do you call that rebuffle of the, uh, the I'm a, I'm proud to be I'm an American song is that correct Yeah yeah he wrote it kind of to contest that song 
kind of like the the analogy that I have is Tesla versus Einstein. Edison, Tesla Edison. against Edison, yeah, yeah. But just that, and then we bunch them together. Mm -hmm. and... But so, there's two more, there's two more sections of this song. Please um, go want to finish it. I really don't know who I am, but I will. I know there's a purpose for me to be here still. Dust is to dust, heavy memory. Even if they grind me, still dust I will be. So even if even if we try and diminish these people who have given their entire lives for the United States, they're still going to be in our dust. It's still going to be there. There's still going to be some type of essence or memory of them that's not going to go away. And the very last, the closing line of this poem, it's always... We ramble this river and I along your green valleys, I'll work until I die and this land I'll defend with my life if need be for my pasture, pastures of plenty must always be free. And it is truly a good closure for that poem about the and about the people who have no power. They build our streets, they build our roads, they uh, harvest our crops. But they feel powerless. That's what it's about. And for that reason, I want to show you something that I think everybody needs to know. And if you don't know that, you should. Now, I'm going to share my screen now here. With you. And this is actually a video by Jennifer Lawrence. Everybody knows Jennifer Lawrence. Go watch the entire um, YouTube video. She explained in this uh, video, which is not very long, 12 minutes long, that how American politic is managed in the United States and why people feel powerless, why people feel that they don't matter anymore. I'm just going to show you this uh, part, this, uh, this picture of the video. Just go look for it. Look for Jennifer Lawrence and uh, the American political system this will come up. Now, this slide, what she's presenting says, imagine something that 0% of the population is for. Like, we should kill children. 0% of the Americans are for that. There's this something that 100% of the Americans are for. Like, the children should be well nourished. No matter how much of the Americans are for one thing or not, or against it, it has that bill in the Congress in the, along the ages. In current Congress, as before, has 30% the chance of passing. So practically developed people is irrelevant. I can guarantee you more than 90% of the American, well, there are some that are really crazy, but 90% of the American don't want our money to go to bombs to be dropped on head of gods and babies. But the will of people is irrelevant. No matter what you do, no matter what you are for or against, in American current American politics, there's a 30% chance of that bill passing. That's why we have now bills that says we should give 17 billion dollar more bombs to Israel to drop on head of babies. Now, when you look the little forward, then you see this is Wait, can you repeat that? Your audio is really cutting out. Oh, so, what I was saying that I understand why people feel powerless in the American political system. Because the fact is, if 0% of the Americans are for a bill versus 100% of the Americans are for a bill, it is irrelevant. That bill has 30% chance of passing. The will of the people is not reflected in current American politics. Now, if you go to Jennifer Lawrence shows it pretty well. There is another line coming up is what the powerful structures and lobbies want is more correlate uh, what's going to pass in our Congress 
than what people want. So I understand when I meet people who are frustrated, they hate the politician, they feel that no matter what we do, all of that is meaningless. But I'm just saying this struggle that uh, Woody Guthrie went through, that they come and build our roads, they are feeling powerless. There is a wall that says no trespassing. There is a system that diminished their involvement in the American life. This has been there, and this is still today in 2024 still here. That is why people go crazy about this. They they're just cannot take it anymore. Unfortunately, sometimes some populists, they take advantage of this frustration of the people. But there is hope. Please, everybody go watch that video by Jennifer Lawrence about American political system in full. There is hope. We still, this is a land of the people and we can do something about it. But that is a different conversation. I don't want anybody walking out of this podcast feeling powerless, diminished, or depressed. Because well, at the end of that, at the end of his poem, he even says that regardless of pretty much everything that he just mentioned, he will still die defending this country. And I think that that's, I think that that's the general consensus too, is people want to come here for a reason. There's, there is a message behind the United States and a meaning behind the United States. It's kind of more of a matter of finding it and standing for it. And standing for it. That's that's exactly what it is, standing for it. And the, the, the not holding back, not just going silent. When, when you see injustice is happening, not because uh, of your personal, uh, the, uh, no, of personal feeling or personal profit, uh, being silenced and not talk about what's just and what's not just. And we see that today after six months and 30, almost 33,000 people, 15,000 babies and killed children dying. We see that this is a, this is a real struggle in 2024. That we American, we don't want our money to go kill eight people, people who go there to feed starving people and get targeted and killed. That we are tired of that. We don't want that. And thoughts and prayers are not good enough anymore. That no, they really we, never have been. Well, you know, that is what we say. We are just going to look into that. That I, I, I can say I have been always an advocate for Democrat. No more. No more. Well, I, I think the biggest message that I want to send with this podcast is regardless of your political view, you should still be comfortable to voice your opinion for the people. Like, for instance, for myself, I'm always voicing my opinion. I don't really uh, worry about people not wanting to like me because it's my opinion. It's really what I believe morally is correct. And I'm going to voice it. I think that it's actually my responsibility as an American to do that. And and I think you know this is that the, the the silence of the people is what enable horrific things to happen along this history. And um, I, again, these are our bombs. These are our money that's killing people. We we as a as a folk as a people, we cannot remain silent anymore. And that's one of the powerful things about art. You can use art, like whether it's music, poetry, painting, literally anything, you can use art to get a message across, I think, in a more um, understanding way. Like when someone writes a poem, it helps to put things into perspective or like if someone's painting, it helps to visualize things. So using your art to send a message and talk about what's right, that's your job as an American. If if Woody Guthrie didn't do this, we wouldn't have the song to look back on. If Bob Marley didn't talk about injustices, we wouldn't be able to have that to look back on. So people shouldn't be afraid or nervous to say how they're feeling and say like what's truly bothering them because you never know. Maybe you're the first person to say that and you're going to start a movement that makes other people feel comfortable to say that too. 
And I think that's as well a duty of people who have the um, microphone, who have celebrity status. That's their truly their their duty to point and uh, to this direction. And uh, you and I we have talked about that so often that you and I we are against the TikTok ban. Um, because that has been for a long time the most unbiased place to get the information and distribute information to people. I want to talk about actually how the government tries to silence information because when I was looking up these lyrics on ChatGPT, I actually violated the ChatGPT terms of conduct simply by asking what are the true lyrics of this song. If I... That is, that is absolutely... Uh, Unbelievable. I mean, how how can we be looking for the, uh, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, I want to do that on my computer right now and just show uh, if that's still, if maybe it was a, something else or. No, it couldn't have been an error because I tried it multiple times. And if we keep doing that, if we keep trying to erase history, that is the perfect recipe to repeat it. See? Hmm. See now? Look in the bottom. Here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The content may violate our term of use and use policy. Did we get this wrong? Oh, you put this wrong, PPT. Um, so, is it possible that somebody doesn't want to hear or us to listen to the full poem? It is I, I, it makes me be a conspiracy theorist. I was about to say the same thing. I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist when I say that. When I say that someone in the government, someone somewhere is trying to cover up history or trying to erase history, silence us. But okay. Everybody, we are not joking. If you are not able to see that, I'm in chat and I type, what is the lyric to this land is my land? And it starts with the verse one and two and chorus, and then it cuts off at verse three, and the note says here, says this content may violate our term of usage and usage policies. And uh, I mean, I thought I'm never going to be a conspiracy terrorist, but I'm getting very close. And this was actually supposed to be our national anthem. Woody Guthrie was approached multiple times and asked to make this the national anthem. And he said, no, the song is not for the government. The song is for the people. Well, Amanda, that, that's if you open to probably a can of worms. <laughs> we have no more questions than answers. But uh, this was a very emotional podcast for both of us. I think it's an emotional song, and it's it's good to understand the history of music, too. Well, Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> this was Essence of History. Today, we talked about whose land really is this. I'm Amanda Armagost. And this is Dr. Bossi for Essence. Thank you for joining us.